By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Italy. We are still at the Prosecco Cup and uh, I'm actually yeah, playing against a friend of the channel, a longtime friend of the channel. Actually, both of them are. I ran into Kira and Justin from the Desert Twisters and it is so cool that I've been able to meet them in real life, play magic with them and talk about magic and talk about life actually in general, have a bunch of drinks. It was great to meet you guys. And in this episode, I'm playing against Kira, AKA Lady Death Dutch. And I mean, she's playing a scary deck. She's fun, but she's playing a scary deck. I mean, it's basically the deck, uh, but then with Titania Song as a finisher, a summer edition Titania Song which is beautiful. And of course, I'm battling her with the deck that I took with me to Italy, which is Quattro Drago. So that's my uh, Living Plane Eureka Brew. But before I continue with the deck text, first a message from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. Okay, and we are back now. I mean, this promises to be an exciting match. Like these duels with the deck, they usually take long and it's a lot of puzzling. And in the end, I usually, usually lose, but maybe, just maybe I can beat it today with my Quattro Drago, who knows. Uh, anyway, before I start with the deck text, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip the deck text and check out uh, check them out later, maybe after the game. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the action. Okay, and now I'm going to continue with the deck text. I'm actually gonna start with my deck, Quattro Drago. And here we see my deck, Quattro Drago, which is kind of a weird name for this deck because Quattro Drago is Italian for four dragons and they're actually eight dragons in here because I'm playing Shiva Dragon and I'm playing Dragon Wolf. I gotta laugh a little because you've gotta understand, I was drinking Prosecco. I knew two words of Italian, so I just decided that's gonna be the name for the deck, Quattro Drago. You know, that's, I felt like that sounds intimidating against my Italian opponents. I can already tell you they weren't very intimidated. But anyway, uh, the deck actually revolves around two other cards, which is Eureka and Living Plane. So maybe just start with Eureka, because that's how this, this deck idea kind of started. Eureka is a sorcery from Legends for two green and two that reads, starting with you, each player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. Repeat this process until no one puts a card onto the battlefield, right? So even if my opponent stops playing out any permanents with Eureka, I can just continue. And you can also play lands with this card. So that's kind of a, an important thing to, to say, because sometimes people forget that they think, yeah, but the land is not a permanent. Yes, it is. But in a lot of cards, they say non-land permanents. And, you know, land is just a permanent. So you can also play it out with your Eureka. So you can play more than one land out if you have this Eureka, right? Um, and then you have Living Plane. Now, that kind of connects a little bit to that, what I just said. Living Plane is an enchant world from Legends that simply reads all lands or 1-1 one, one creatures that they are still lands, right? So you can still tap them for mana, but they're now also 1-1 one, one creatures, meaning they also have Summoning Sickness. Now, what I want to do here is I want to cast Eureka, and with my Eureka, I want to play a Living Plane and preferably a Triskelion. Triskelion is, of course, this uh, card from Antiquities, this 1-1 one, one creature that comes into play with three plus one plus one counters, and you can take those counters off to deal one damage to any target. So if you have Living Plane and Trike on the battlefield, you can instantly destroy uh, three lands, right? So that's basically what I want to do here. But again, if I don't have Living Plane, I can still use my Eureka to, cheap my, uh, uh, to cast my Triskelions very cheaply, to cast my Sheevan Dragons very cheaply, to get some Dragon Whelps out early, you know, and I can just start swinging with those. So there's also that part of the plan. I'm also playing with the single Soul Canard of Swamp King, which is a big 5-5 five, five beef boy. So, you know, Eureka can help me that way as well. Uh, later in the game, if maybe I'm I'm down a lot of life, I can use my Eureka to cast my um, my Mirror Universe, kind of trade lives and start the game all over. So I've got a couple of tricks, right? Um, so it, it, it doesn't depend fully 
on the living plane plan, but it is kind of a deck where you could say, um, I have two strategies, and if they align perfectly, it's gonna be disastrous for my opponent. But that's of course going to be the trick for me. And because I'm looking um, for like specific cards, I've put in the, the draw sevens, Wheel of Fortune and Time Twister in here, of course, and Ancestral Recall. Uh, Time Walk is also great, right? Imagine I drop two Sheevan Dragons with Eureka and then play a Time Walk to get an extra turn and swing in straight away. That would be kind of a dream scenario talking about that. I'm also playing with one Concordant Crossroads. That's an Enchant World also uh, from Legends that says your creatures now have haste. This is, of course, sometimes counterproductive because you cannot have two Enchant Worlds on the battlefield. So I have to kind of see when am I going to use my Concordant Crossroads and when am I going to use my Living Plane. But of course, I'm in control of that. I can decide when I'm going to cast uh, what. So I don't think it's really in the way of each other. And then there are a couple of um, spells here in the deck that work together really well with Living Plane. And um, those spells are Pyrotechnics. So Pyrotechnics, again, a card from Legends. This deck is very Legends heavy, by the way. That's also why I have special Legends sleeves. You'll see in a moment. Um, but anyway, Pyrotechnics is a sorcery for 104 that reads, Pyrotechnics deals four damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. Meaning if I have Living Plane out and then I play Pyrotechnics, I can destroy four lands with one card. I mean, that's just insane value. Talking about insane value, I also play with Falling Star. So I can flip my Falling Star and then every land it hits is going to deal three damage to that. Now, um, there are kind of rules with these cards with flipping, like with the Chaos Orb as well, is that the cards cannot overlap. So the, the highest total um, of cards that you can hit with the Falling Star is actually six. Now, I've used it previously in this tournament where I hit uh, four. I'm actually, you, this is the video where that happens. Four of them. Four. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. So that's why I wanted to show you it here. Hopefully in this match, I get a chance to use my Falling Star Living Plane combo as well. It's always a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. This is what I want to do. Now let's take a look at the uh, hmm, very, very strong deck and controlling deck of, uh, of my opponent. And here we see the very scary deck of Lady Deftouch, right? So this is the deck, isn't it? Or am I missing something? We've got Uber Control going on here. Four Swords, four Disenchants four counter spells, all the blue power, all the restricted card cards, no creatures in here at all, except for, of course, the Mistress Factories, also playing one Abyss main that makes sense in this deck and going pretty heavy on the drawing card section as well with three JM Day Tomes and also playing two Ivory Towers main. So really like, she's just gonna wait for me to do stuff and basically counter it away, sorts it away, waiting for the right time, slowly getting card advantage through your JM Day Tomes you know, maybe have a Loa on board. And if you really like take a lot of damage early on, which which is what could happen against my deck, right? My ultimate scenario, my ideal scenario is trying to drop a Eureka, maybe turn two, maybe turn three, just as quick as possible. And then play out a lot of big creatures and try to overwhelm her that way. Um, and then she does have kind of a backup plan with the Mirror Universe where she can, of course, switch his lives. Of course, Mirror Universe has a pretty high casting cost. So if I can, you know, work on my plan very quickly, I can win it. But I think if this game is going to take longer, which it usually does, then I think she's going to win. And her finisher, of course, is the legendary Titania song. It's really cool to see her using this card as a finisher in the deck. I think it's quite quite nice to see that. Um, and it's a beautiful summer edition as well. It's one uh, green and three to cast raised enchantment. And it turns all the uh, non-creature artifacts into artifact creatures. And um, they lose all abilities and their power toughness is equal to their casting cost. So for example, your mirror universe has six as a casting cost. So it now becomes a six, six bad boy. Um, and I guess those those little flower stones now become two twos where you can hit with. Your gem day tomes become four fours. The downside, of course, is that you are gonna kill your own moxen when you do this. But I think, you know, if you're a lady death touch and if you're piloting this deck, you're only gonna use it the moment that you instantly win the game, right? You're gonna play the Titania song and then turn all your big uh, artifacts sideways and win the game basically with one swing. The nice thing about Titania song is that even if you disenchant it. Um, the effect still lasts. So it's not gone by simply disenchanting it. It's it's so interesting about old school, right? That some of these cards have these abilities. I think I think it's so it's so sweet that you have all these exceptions to the rule. I, uh, I made a video recently about Cabo Ghoul, for example, that even if he's not in play, he kind of counts the creatures that, that died that turn because when you then bring it into the game later, it gets those counters. So I love cards like Cabo Ghoul, like Titania Song, 
that kind of have this weird interaction and weird rules that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Um, another card that I can now think of from the top of my head is Copy Artifact, for example. When you cast it, you can counter it with a red, red Elemental Blast, but once it hits the board and it's turned into an artifact, it also takes over the color of the artifact, which is colorless. So you can no longer use your Red Elemental Blast against the copy. Like like little, like neat little things like that I really, really love about the game of old school. Um, anyway, this is the deck of Lady Death Touch. It's looking mighty scary. Loving all the altars, by the way. Also, look at those Sarah Angels in the sideboard. Beautiful altars. I hope she's going to board them in, you know. And I guess maybe it's even a good choice against my deck. When I cast Eureka, she can at least cast a Sarah Angel. And I think, I think for me, that's the only silver lining here is that Eureka for uh, for Lady Death Touch is not going to do as much. It's not a good card for her. So if I can get that out early and she's unable to counter it, I, I, I can see possibilities for me in this matchup. Okay, so this is the deck of Lady. We've looked at my deck and that only means one thing. We are ready for the match here at the Prosecco Cup in Italy. Game number one, here we go. So it looks like Lady Death Touch has actually already started with the Tundra here on the battlefield. She's playing the deck. And I'm playing Living Plane uh, Eureka. And I'm starting with a Birds of Paradise. Passing the turn. Oh, look at that Ancestral Recall for Lady Death Touch. Look at that beautiful play mat of hers, by the way. So we are here at the Prosecco Cup. And uh, this will be a tough matchup for me. But if I'm able to quickly cast Eureka, who knows what's going to happen. There's the City of Brass. And it looks like she has to discard, perhaps. Looking at her hand, I mean, if she started on seven, you play a land, you're down to six, then you play your Ancestral Recall, you go uh, to five, then draw three, go to eight, then drop a land, and you've got seven, right? So you don't have to discard. Ooh, she's going to play a Black Lotus. Are we going to see something explosive? A little bit in the tank here already at uh, the second turn. Perhaps she's got some uh, some big options. Is she considering maybe a draw seven, second the Lotus into a draw seven? Ooh, she's gonna sack the Lotus. Oh, she's gonna tap two more, taking a damage, gonna go down to 19. Oh, a mind twist. Oh, of course. Oh, I'm so naive. I'm so naive, people. I don't even think of a mind twist. Oh, yuck. This is such a killer. Uh, look at what I'm losing. Pyrotechnics, a dragon whelp, and two lands. Oh, but this mind twist. Come on. That's why mind twist is so good in a power deck. Okay, I've got a black lotus as well. Cracking my lotus. And, ooh, Sulkanar, the Swamp King. So this is a 5-5 five, five creature with Swamp Walk, and every time you play a black spell or your opponent, you gain one life. Yeah, read that card. I mean, I'm expecting a quick Swords on here, but if she doesn't have creature removal, this is going to be fun. So let's just, you know, keep my fingers crossed, hope for the best. As you can see, I've got no cards in hand. So this is going to be really tough for me. Looks like she's gonna tap. Yep, there's the Swords to Plowshares. There's the, there's the Swords to Plowshares. Man, this is the thing with old school, right? I mean, you play the cool creature, you get punished for it. But hey, it still feels good. I'm gaining five, gonna go up to 25 at least. And um, yeah, maybe we're in here for a long game. Drawing for turn and just a land passing. It's a draw go for me. And the Lady Death Touch actually missed a land drop the previous turn. Is finding a land now. There's a Felwer Stone. But that does mean that she cannot counter next turn. So if I get, for example, a Time Twister or a Wheel of Fortune from the top, that would be ideal. Ooh, unfortunately for me, it's just a Pendlehaven passing the turn. There's another land. That's a factory. She can actually start attacking me next turn, putting some pressure on. As the Italians say. Going through her hand here. I mean, basically, you just want to keep counter magic up, right? That's it. Just keep passing the turn until you have enough lands to and have counter magic up and play a gem day tome. I think that's kind of what you're doing right now in the in this stage in the game. And tapping four. Okay, there's a dragon whelp. Okay, we've got some pressure on the board here. 
two three flyer you can pay one red to give it plus one plus oh no counter magic uh from kira for this one does that mean that she's got another swords in hand perhaps i mean she is she's a little light on cards right can i be that optimistic i mean she's dropped some stones but okay okay there's a chaos orb so i wonder if she's gonna flip Tapping. Oh, she is going to flip. Okay, so at least she's got to work for it. Let's see if she hits. Oh, it's a bumpy one, but it's a hit. That was a bumpy one. Like the cards at the carnival. But uh, it is a hit. Yeah, and I mean, I, can't, I need to be luckier here, right? I need to have this moment that maybe she only has mana sources in hand and she can't do anything. Playing my mox out here. Perhaps I should have kept it in hand, by the way. Pretending to maybe have something. I don't know what, but... You know, the mox is now open. I think it would have been better to just, you know, keep keep the card in hand, maybe pretending for it to be a lightning bolt that she wouldn't animate the uh, the factory here. Anyway, taking two. So finally some damage being dealt here. And a look at that passing to turn one card in hand. Perhaps that's a mana source. Going over it like, ooh, this could be a lightning bolt. I don't even... Do I play bolts in this deck, actually? I forgot. Okay, there's the attack for two. Going to go down to 21. Yeah. Drawing another card. So that's another Mox, Mox Jet passing the turn. I mean, they're beautiful cards. And what I really enjoyed, one of the things I enjoyed about this Living Plane deck is that I just got to play with all the Power 9, uh, which is something I don't do often. So it was quite nice, but it's just not always handy. You know, the Mox don't always come at the right time. And top decking a mox just doesn't feel that good. There's the animate again, the attack for two. So I'm going to drop here to 19. And there's the pass. Okay, two cards in hand. Let's do something here. The problem is if I play something out, there's such a big chance that I'm going to run into uh, a counterspell. But then again, if I wait longer, she's only going to draw more cards and the chance of me running into a counterspell gets even higher. So it's just really tough here. I could, or just go for it and let her have the counter spell, or you know maybe I've got nothing in hand and just pretending to have something in hand. Yeah. Something else I could do here is you know try to get maybe two cards in hand that are quite good and play one card first to lure out the counter spell. Uh, taking two more damage here, by the way, from Kira, so dropping to 17. Tapping two. What are we gonna see? Okay, there's a time walk. So maybe this time walk is just a lure. And yeah, of course, if you're Kira, you're like, yeah, fine. What else? You know, take an extra turn. You've got, you've got a Birds of Paradise. <laughs> I mean, go ahead. It doesn't matter. Two cards in hand. And I, I can kind of see that I'm thinking about maybe making a move, but also realizing that it's probably not going to go anywhere. So two cards in hand for me now. At least the Mind Twist is already out of the deck of Kira. That's, that's something. And I mean, her deck is slow. So, okay, here's a Demonic. I wonder what she's going to look up because she also, Mind Twist is in the bin, but also Ancestral Recall is already in the bin. So maybe a Jam Day Tome, right? Just to start drawing some cards. She's got the Soul Ring, so that would actually be quite a good choice. I mean, that's what you want to do is the deck. Control the board and kind of slowly, you know, take advan card advantage, which is perfect here, that scenario, when you ha would have a Jam Day Tome. So she, she's uh, shuffling up here. And uh, yep, passing the turn, saying, you know, take your turn. I, I believe I just drew into a Felwer Stone. I'm going to play out my Felwer Stone. It's an Italian Felwer Stone, by the way, since we were in Italy. And uh, passing the turn back, yeah. I mean, this is, this is tough, because at a certain point, I can also consider just to concede here and go to the second game but i much rather just you know want to try one more thing see if i can maybe squeeze in the draw seven for example try to get back into it i'm still on 17. so she's going to tap two and tap five okay maybe she looked up a brain geyser that's another option of course oh a mirror universe i wonder why she did that does that mean that maybe she's got a titania song that Kira, that would be style points. If you're gonna to try to kill me with the Titania song, that would be super cool. I can respect that. I mean, 
This Mirror Universe kind of signals that to me because why would she, you know, play this card out now? I'm on 17, she's on 19. There's nothing for her really to gain from this Mirror Universe. Unless, of course, she's got the Titania Song Plan because then it's all of a sudden a 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> You've been playing this the whole day. Yeah, right? Wow. Yeah, look at that. Putting those two sources there separate, indicating uh, that she's got a counter spell, you know. Oh, she's going to tap it. Is she going to take an extra turn? Take a turn. Yeah, she's going to play a time walk. Forgot to take a damage there, by the way. Should be on 18. I don't think it's very relevant, but still. Attacking again for two. Look at me. I I'm going to go down pretty quickly here. I'm on 13 now. Gonna go for a graveyard. Perhaps she's got a regrowth. Is she, is she gonna do uh, regrowth? It says recall here. <laughs> Let's see. Tapping four. Ooh, there's the Titania song. Yeah, I love this. Kira, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You're doing the cool thing. And I got to respect that. I got to respect that. I mean, this is so nice. I'm so happy uh, that I recorded this match. We get to see your Titania song in action. So there's a 6-6 mirror universe coming in my direction, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I just didn't attack But this is capped because she played this out. No, no, no. I played that with you. And they're looking at the mana. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just... Yeah, I mean, she's gonna, he's gonna swing in here. There's the attack. Two, two, two Felwer Stones, a six, six Mirror Universe, and I've got one Felwer Stone and a bird here. I could, of course, put my bird in front of the mirror, I guess, or my stone and take four, but I think the best way of blocking here, looking at it, is maybe just put the birds in front of the mirror and the stone in front of a stone and trade. Or keep the stone, of course, to chum block next turn and just take four from the uh, from the two flower stones. I would drop down to nine. I mean, either way, I'm, it's it's not looking great for me, right? I mean, I can I can I can think about this block for a long time, but at the end of the day, it's not looking great. I just kind of chump here. It seems gonna take four, drop to nine. Makes sense. Because then next turn I can block the mirror again. It's gonna buy me another turn, hopefully. So I've got three cards in hand. I just gotta, you know. Pray that these are any good. I mean, she still has counter magic up. It just feels bad. I mean, I've got I've got five lands. If I were stone, no longer taps for mana. So I wonder, like, for example, if I have a Sheevan in hand. Yeah, maybe I'm realizing this now that the Felwer Stone doesn't tap for mana. Perhaps I've got a Sheevan in hand that I want to play out, but I can't right now. Do I have that or not? It's hard to see. Yeah, you know. Oh, it does look like I've got a blue card in hand that I can no longer cast. I think that's why I'm so bummed. So I forgot about this. I think I've got maybe Ancestral Recall or maybe my Time Twister in hand there. And because I blocked with the Birds of Paradise, I can no longer produce blue mana. And my Felber Stones, of course, don't work because of the Titania song. And that was probably my only out. I was kind of waiting for this, this desperation move to happen. Hey, you are. You're doing a, I'm a Oh man, movie. yeah, that was a bad that was a bad decision. Anyway, attacking now and um looks like I'm just gonna block one of the Felwer Stones. Am I gonna block the other Felwer Stone and just take all the damage? Now I'm gonna chump the mirror here, take two, gonna go down to seven. I mean what I really do at this stage doesn't matter. Is she gonna go for a time walk? Go for the time walk and win it here with your mirror universe. That will be absolutely epic. Go do it. Exactly. There is the time walk and winning the game. And yeah, look at that. Now I'm showing my hand here. And I actually, I had that blue card time twister in hand. I mean, she did have the counter spell. But still, you know, I forgot all about that. I do remember it now. Like, I chumped with the bird. Then it was my turn. I wanted to tap my Felwer Stone for blue mana. And, I, I mean, of course, you know at that time she's probably going to counter it away. But still, you got to play towards your outs, right? And this was my out. I was waiting for the right moment. I'm like, oh, no, I can't cast it. Anyway, uh, Kira, man, this was a super convincing win here in game one. I think that Mind Twist 
kind of meant game over for me, to be honest. But hey, the good news is it's just game one, and we're now going to continue to game number two. Game number two, here we go. Here we see the hand of Kira. It was kind of hard to see Fireball in their power sink and Divine Offering and some Lance. Let's take a look here. Oh, Sheevan Dragon, Wheel of Fortune. And I've got a Black Lotus there. So maybe with that Lotus, I might be able to like get a quick Sheevan out. There's just playing the duel and passing. Oh man, I didn't see that card. Really? Library of Alexandria, that is a bit of a problem. But maybe it's also kind of an advantage here. I think I top deck, did I top deck Eureka? Oh, Eureka, oh, this is so much fun. Wow, that was a great top deck for me. That wasn't in my opener. So this is the dream scenario, right? Lotus to help me cast the Eureka. And of course, uh, Lady Death Touch doesn't want to really cast anything. I mean, I think this draw of the lower, you can do that in response to me casting the Eureka, right? But not while we're in the, uh, the, the resolving of the card. But I guess she did it in response, so it doesn't matter that much. She is going to play out something else, a factory as well. So I believe she's now on the, on the six cards in hand. Or now she's on six, I guess. There's a Soul Canard, a Swamp King, and of course my Sheevan Dragon. And remember, the card that I still have in hand is that uh, Wheel of Fortune. So I can draw into a new seven next turn if I get to resolve it, of course. But um, this is looking so cool. Look at this Soul Canard, a Swamp King, and a Sheevan Dragon. Turn two, so next turn I can uh, swing in for 10. That is going to be huge. I just hope that Kira doesn't have a Swords. Even if she has a Swords, it's only going to solve, uh, you know, going to solve one problem, going to kill one creature. If she's got a balance, she could do that. But then, I mean, she no longer can use her uh, Library of Alexandria. So either way, it's pretty uh, golden for me here. What a, what a top deck, you know, getting that Eureka. That was absolutely gold, and there's just a pass. And she's got no counter magic, so I can just start casting this Wheel of Fortune. Oh, drawing into Ancestral Recall. Okay, that's almost a pity, right? Because she just really wanted to cast that wheel. But now I'm going for the Ancestral instead. Playing out a factory here. And gonna play out... Ooh, it's soaring. I still have enough mana to also cast a wheel, by the way. Okay. There we go. Looks like I'm going to pump here, though. Okay. I wonder if it wouldn't have been better. I, I don't know what that other card in my hand is. Maybe it's another big creature that I don't want to, like, put in the yard. But it looked very attractive here to go for that Wheel of Fortune after uh, combat. Actually, I should do that before combat. Anyway, Kira here drawing an extra card. I mean, she's got the, the Loa. That's really good for her. But the problem are those two big creatures on the board. She's already on 12 after that attack. So next turn perhaps could be the end of the road. It can, of course, animate my uh, Mishra's factory as well. I mean, if she puts her factory in front of the Soul Canar, and uh, then I think she can still survive. She'll take seven. I can pump the dragon with two, so she'll take nine. End up on three, have another turn. But that's mighty risky. So yeah, really cool to see my deck here do its thing. This is what I want to do. And yeah, of course, I had great top decks here. Eureka, Ancestral Recall. I mean, that's fantastic. And that's it. She's uh, picking up her cards saying, you've got this. I do believe she had one more turn here, though. Okay, also had there that regrowth. And I had Triskelly, and that's probably why I didn't uh, want to play out the uh, the Wheel of Fortune. I still wonder, let me know what you have done if you've top decked that Ancestral Recall, and it would be like, your second card next to that wheel. Would you play the wheel or the Ancestral? I think the Ancestral was probably a better choice. Anyway, this was a very quick game number two, and really showing how explosive Eureka can be here. And uh, the good news is that we're going to go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. So it's 1-1. One, one. I'm feeling pumped after winning that second game. I can do this. Let's look at my hand. Ooh, lots of mana sources and a red elemental blast. Okay, I mean, maybe with the factories I can start attacking a little bit, but that, that looks like a, the hand you maybe want to mull away. I'll keep it. Looks like I'm thinking about it, but deciding to keep. Let me slam the card <laughs> on the playmat. I mean, I could take a mulligan here. Anyway, let's see what Lady Death Touch has. 
Here we go. That's her hand. Ooh, she's got Titania's song, but also not for her. Not a great hand either. Like, she doesn't have a lot to work with. I can imagine she takes a mulligan here. Or did she already take one? I would consider maybe putting the song on the bottom. To be honest. Game with the Titans. It looks like she is uh, taking a mulligan here because she's really going for her hand. She looks like she's got to choose to put one on the bottom. No, she doesn't. Okay. This is just her first seven. Going to start with Mox Jet into... Uh, well, not into nothing, actually. Mox Jet and uh, Mishra's Factory here. In game number three. So whoever wins this one wins the match here at the Prosecco Cup. There is a Taiga into a Birds of Paradise and passing their turn. So that looks kind of okay, but yeah, what else can I find? I wonder what uh, card I top decked. There's a Tundra hitting the board, an Animate, and Attack of Two, gonna drop to 18. So some pressure here from Kira. AKA a Lady Death Touch from the Desert Twisters. Play a Mistress Factory here. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank about what to do here. And there's a Felverstone, okay. I mean, just a lot of mana sources, but nothing else really going on here, passing the turn. I mean, I can kind of see a red elemental blast in my hand there that we also saw in the opener, but I cannot really make out what the other cards are. And here Kira's gonna tap four, perhaps playing out that Jam de Tome. Oh, a mind twist again. Oh, God. This is so brutal. This is so brutal. Like, game one, game three, give me a break. And we know that the mind twist wasn't in her opener, so it's a card that she uh, she drew into. Oh, so I get to keep these two. I wonder what I'm going to lose. Mishra's Factory, a land, and my Red Elemental Blast. That Red Elemental Blast kind of hurt. Because you want to kind of keep that right for your maybe your your big moment where you're going to play out your big spell and you have that back up in case Kira has a counter spell, but that's gone now. I mean, it could have been worse. It's only a mind twist for three, I guess. I still have got to keep two cards in my hand, but it is pretty painful. Playing another land, going to tap two here. Three even. Do I have some kind of draw seven? Ooh, I've got Wheel of Fortune. I love it. That wheel is ideal. That's a great answer to that mind twist. And uh, she's going to lose that Jam Day Tome now. I think that's the most important part uh, for me. But she had four cards in hand. She's going to lose those draw seven new ones. But more importantly for me, I'm going to draw seven new ones. And that opens up a lot of possibilities. I do believe I already played a land. Of course, I can animate the factory attack for two, put her on 17. That could be a consideration. She is tapped out. Okay, gonna tap the birds for another birds. Okay, that's probably the better the better choice here. I mean, if she's on 19 or 17, it doesn't really matter that much. Play out the bird, passing the turn. Oh, I wonder what I have in hand. Spinning the wheel. Let's hope for the best. Oh, look at that, Aloha. Are you kidding me? So I'm battling Mind Twists and Loas here. Oh, man. I mean, Lady Fortune is not with me, despite the fact that I'm the person casting the Wheel of Fortune. So Lady Death Touch, of course, uh, doing great here. Drawing that Loa and, of course, being able to use it. So she's got eight cards in hand at the moment. And yeah, I wonder what she's going to do now. I mean, again here, maybe you just want to discard. Um, you know, you don't want to tap out. You want to keep two blue open to counter, I guess, right? That's what you want to do when you're the deck player. And maybe it means to discard. Or does she have seven in hand already? I'm going to go through my hand there, by the way. And Tranquility there also... Oh, I do have a strip mine, I believe. It's quite good. I also see a Sheevan Dragon. So I have some options. I think the strip mine is really good news for me. Oh, she is going to tap. She is going to cast something. It's going to tap three. What are we going to see? There's a recall. She's going to throw away a land. What is she going to get back? A fireball here. Okay, she's going to try to burn me out. Okay. 
I mean, that card's good, but not that scary at the moment. And again, she cannot counter, so kind of giving me an option here. I believe I top decked Soul Canard the Swamp King. Could go here for Strip Mine and cast Sheevan. I think that's the best option, right? I don't really have to. Do I really have to think about this? There's the Strip Mine. Exactly. So stripping the Library of Alexandria. Come on, play the Sheevan. Go, Sheevan. Do it! Get to the chopper! Get to the drago! There it is! Shivan the dragon! Cuatro drago! Uno on the board! Bam! Here we go! It was great. At the tournament the whole day long, I was casting Shivan dragons. It was glorious. Did I win a lot? No, thank you for asking. But it was glorious to cast these Shivan dragons. There's the Ancestral Recall here from Kira. That's a great answer. So finally getting rid of that Loa, and then she casts uh, Ancestral Recall. I mean, it, it, this this yeah, Sheevan Dragon is so toast, it's so going to get swords, yeah, but it, my, at least uh, I got it on the board for one turn. All on the yeah. <laughs> oh, really? It's going to go through her hand here. Like Does that mean that she's got a balance? Is she going to play a balance, wipe out my two birds and my dragon? It's going to go for a yeah. pearl here. Uh, Why do we have those, those cards there, Kira? What are you doing? It's kind of scary. Okay, there's there's a Felwer Stone, but that's two to cast, isn't it? I'm a little bit confused here. Because it looks like she only tapped one mana for that uh, to cast that Felwer Stone. But hey, I'm not saying anything about it, so I guess that's all right. I don't know. Anyway, she's not doing anything else. That's the most important thing. She does have, of course, uh, two blue open with that City of Brass and Tundra to potentially counter something, but who cares? Because I've got the Sheevan. I think the best line of player is to first attack with the Sheevan. Because if she then uses a white mana for a Swords, for example, then in second main I can play out something else. Like the Soul Canard of Swamp King. Exactly. Here I go. Into the red zone. Sheevan Dragon. Oh, it's going to hit, it seems. Going to pump it up. Six damage here. Wow. I didn't expect this to happen. And into my second main. Going to tap six for another Sheevan, perhaps. Ooh, a Triskelion, also good. Try coming onto the battlefield with three plus one plus one counter, so it's a four four. But let's first see if it resolves. Of course, Kira could counter this away, has that counter magic open still. She is gonna take a damage here, and it looks like she is gonna counter it away. There's the counter spell. But actually, I'm fine with that. It's it's not ideal, but hey, the Sheevan Dragon lives. And next turn, I can try to play out my Soul Canard of Swamp King. She's got no no um, uh, tools in her hand to draw extra cards, or at least not on the battlefield. Loa's gone. There's no Jam Day Tome. Ancestral Recall is already played out. Mind Twist is already played out. I'm actually, Maybe I'm actually going to win this here. She's going to go through her hand. There's another Tundra. I mean, she's on 13, and I also have two Mistress Factories as well. I mean, she does have one factory to block with, but... It's looking kind of okay. Of course, if she can sort to Sheevan, which I'm still kind of half expecting, but hey, she still hasn't done it yet, so she didn't have one in hand earlier, so that, that means that she should top deck it. She is counting her cards quite a lot. She still has that Fireball as well, of course, that she got deck earlier with the Ancestral Recall. She could go Fireball on the Sheevan. I mean, maybe she has to, to just survive, right? Is that what she's gonna do? Ooh, it's a Mirror Universe! Oh, that makes it complicated. If it's a Mirror Universe, I gotta try to kill her now. Ah, that's tricky. She's on 13. I don't think... Can I kill her? I can make... Ooh, if I have one more land, because then I can animate both of my factories, I can attack for 9. And then I can still... No, oh, I need one more land. So it looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. So I could, for example, tap my Flower Stone and my Birds of Paradise to animate both of my Mistress factories. Then I can still pump 3 red mana into the dragon. And then I can deal 12 damage, but she's on 13, and she's got the Mirror Universe. So I don't want to do that, because then I'm on 1 the next turn. So that would be disastrous. So if I attack, I have to kill her. If I cannot kill her in one swing, I simply have to pass the turn. 
and, and try to put some more on the board. You know, I still have that Solkanar in hand. There's still options. But this Mirror Universe is a very gutsy play here by Kira. But do remember, she does have that one City of Brass open. Yeah, really in the tank here. I mean, I, if, I, if I have one more land in hand, I can actually finish it here. Going to tap five. Okay, going to cast Solkanar. So I'm not going to attack because I don't have lethal. And I think this is a good decision. It's such an interesting game here that that mirror universe kind of shook it up. She's forcing me to think. So, I mean, if, if my board stays as it is, I think I can take the game next turn, but not this turn. There's a regrowth. Going to get back to Trike. That's an extra three points of damage next turn. Going to pass the turn. She's going to take a damage. Yeah, she's going to trade. She's going to trade. And she's going to take Mana Burn. We're playing Atlantic, so Mana Burn counts. So now we're in the upkeep, and she's going to trade the life. So I'm going to drop to 11. Oh, man, I'm on 11. Remember, she still has that Fireball in hand. She's going to gain life, it seems, from her Ivory Tower. Going to gain one, so she's got five in hand after the draw six. How much mana does she have over there? It's like one, two, three, four. That's a soaring six, seven, eight. So she can play a Fireball for seven. So that's not enough. She's asking, of course, about my creatures. I mean, what, what deals damage? What re represents red mana? All these questions matter, of course. I mean, this is very, very, very interesting uh, third game, I have to say. What can she do? There's another factory. I mean, if she just passes here, then I can I can make a huge attack, right? I could also attack with the Solkanar. But it looks like she wants to do something else because she's kind of counting and looking around and glaring at her hand. Like, I think she wants to do something else as well. Scares me a little bit, but nope, she's passing the turn. Okay. Untap, upkeep, draw. I'm on 11 now. Kira on 19 after that switch with the Mirror Universe. Finding it looks like a Birds of Paradise there. Having that trike in hand as well that I played a regrowth on. I'm going to play out the other bird. And I think one of those factories still has summoning sickness. So even if she decides to double block, then she needs to put both in front of the bus. But look at this, only attacking with the Sheevan. So not super aggressive. I think I could have been more aggressive here. Then in my second main, probably going to play out the Triskelion here. Uh, passing the turn, so a little bit conservative. There's a disenchant on the trike, but at least I can deal three more. So Kira now on 11 as well. Yeah, and I kind of part, partly feel that maybe I should have just attacked with the Solkanar here as well. I mean, you just want to put pressure on the life total of Kira. I'm really more the aggressor in this match. Then again, of course, we cannot see what, what the other three cards in my hand, or maybe I have good reasons to play it this way. So Kira here counting everything up. And of course, with the Soul Canar and the Birds of Paradise, I still have two chum blockers if she decides to, uh, to attack with the factories to kind of try to get me lower. Remember, she still has that Fireball in hand. Ooh, Demonic Tutor. Oh, no. Why can she look up here? I mean, balance seems really, really good on this board. You can just play balance. I'm going to lose all my creatures. I think balance is the way to go here, to be honest. 
I mean, Balance would get her right back into the game. Yeah, I gained a life from the demonic. Yay, good for me. Gonna go up to 12. The cool thing about Soul Canar, by the way, is I think it's a pretty good card. Like, 5 mana for a 5-5 five five that only has upsides. I mean, that is pretty good. Of course, you do need to have the mana to cast it, right? You need uh, blue, black, and, and red mana. But if you have that, I mean, you've got a very solid creature. And remember, a lot of people play with black because they splash the tutor and the twist. And then sometimes, you know, they play like an underground sea or something. And it's got Swamp Walk. And it's simply unblockable. And that's relevant sometimes. And so is gaining those little points of extra life. It's quite nice. But uh, yeah, right now I've got three cards in hand and I'm really, really, really worried because I think if you're Kira, you're going to look up the balance and she's now slowly shuffling, but she's going to play it out. I'm afraid of that. I'm tapped out. Even if I wasn't, there's nothing really I can do against the balance. And I mean, I mean you, you could say that I, I don't think I overcommitted here, by the way, because when I played the Soul Canar, it was almost game for me. Tapping a white, what are we going to see? Okay, we're going to see a soul ring first. Going to tap four. Oh, Wrath of God! She's got a Wrath of God in her deck. Okay. <sighs> and that's a big sigh from my side here. Oh, man, that Wrath. Beautiful Wrath, by the way. Nice black bordered, but... Yeah, this is bad. After the Wrath resolves, of course, then she attacks with the Factory. Going to put me on 10, passing the turn. Oh, this is so bad. Also, remember, she's got a lot of mana here and still has that Fireball in hand. I think that Wrath got her the game. What is here for four? Maybe Eureka? Am I going to play another Eureka? Why not? No, it's a Dragon Whelp. Okay. That's not going to do much. <laughs> that is not going to do much. Okay, let's see. I'm on 10. I think she's got enough mana. 2, 4, 7. Yeah, 11. She can do a fireball for 11, I believe. Oh, no. Here we go. She's probably like, you still remember this card, right? That I Ancestral recalled. Like, sorry, recalled for like ages ago. There she goes. Oh, God. I don't want to look at this. There I go. Oh, Fireball. <laughs> Showing my hand here. Two Tranquilities and a Living Plane. Congratulations, Lady Death Dutch, winning here 2-1 two, two, with your Titania song, The Deck Variant. Very, very nice uh, to see your deck in action. And I have to say, man, these were some really, really sweet games that we played together and it was really nice to meet you guys and to hang out in, uh, in Italy here at the Prosecco Cup. It was just a great event. Talking about the Prosecco Cup, more action from the Prosecco Cup is coming next week as well. So if you're enjoying what you see, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And thank you for doing that. And before you go, please consider leaving a like, sharing this on your socials, and of course, leave a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, Timmy uh, Talks has also a very own Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks to find out how you can support the show. And you can already support the show for just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access to um, the Timmy Talks Discord. And if you decide to become a $2 patron, a sorcerer, then your name will be also mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Bakaji.